So uh, we got a, sl- a slew of uh, there's like a, a big surge. I don't know if you guys have noticed it of anti Chinese sentiment. Oh yeah, definitely floating have. around. And so I've just pulled a, lo- a bunch of anti China stories that I've seen. Um, this one's pretty uh, big. Blizzard pulls uh, Blitz Chung from Hearthstone esports tournament over support for Hong Kong protests. So Hearthstone is a giant Blizzard game, uh, like a trading card game. It's huge uh, in the streamer uh, streaming community. Uh, there are huge, big, multi-million dollar competitions for the best in the world at it. And uh, one of the better players, uh, or one of the top players of the game, made some statement uh, Mm -hmm. aligning himself with Hong Kong. Right. Well, he said uh, that, um, I think I have the video of it here. I don't know if we can uh, take a little quick look. So basically, he's gonna try to are trying to hide another table because he just made some statements. Yeah, they don't even want to be on the camera. Like, oh no, 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 no. So basically, he calls for liberation of his country in post game interview. Um, He comes on and basically says, um, "Liberate Hong Kong, revolution of our age." So the uh, reason why this is so um, controversial to Blizzard is because a huge chunk of their money, they own World of Warcraft, they own Diablo, they own StarCraft, they own Hearthstone, in addition to a number of other properties, uh, fucking Overwatch. Oh, a ton of major. uh, Just absolutely major esports type of games. And the esports scene in China is huge. And thus, because of that, People in China play these games at a rate that's even higher than they're played and adopted here in the United States. If they're popular here, they're even more so popular in China. And so this is a straight-up cynical economic move to avoid offending their Chinese population in favor of censoring one of the better players of their game. Right, and uh, basically... uh he, Blitzchung has been removed uh, from the tournament by Blizzard. He's had his he's tournament winnings yeah. revoked. Yeah, he's had his winnings revoked, and he's uh, banned for uh, 12 months from competing. So they basically taken back this dude's money that he won straight up, according to their rules, because of a political statement that he made. Right. Ridiculous. Uh, I mean, so totally here's, what, here's what they say. While we stand by one's right to express individual no, thoughts don't. and opinions. I no, always you, say that. No, Why, you, like, don't, no, well, you, no fucking you fucking don't. don't. Yeah. <laughs> While we stand by one's rights to express individual Fuck thoughts you. and opinions, we're going to reach into somebody who did just that's pocket and take all their money from them. So players and other participants that elect to participate in esports competitions must abide by the official competition rules, which I guess one of them is... Don't, don't talk shit on China. Don't have a yeah. controversial political opinion of any kind. Who knows? Um, Fuck that, dude. Blizzard is part owned by Chinese company Tencent. As of 2017, the company owned 4.9 percent of shares in Activision Blizzard. It also has stakes in video game companies like Ubisoft, Epic, and Riot Games, among others. The Hong Kong protests initially focused on a now suspended bill that would have allowed people arrested in Hong Kong to be transferred to and tried in mainland China, have been ongoing since March 2019 and are now more focused on general democratic rights. Blitz Chung was removed for showing his support for these protests by wearing a mask. Sim- yeah, we already heard about that. So basically, um, Hong Kong for the longest time was a, a, a territory of, what, Britain? Yes. Yes. And, right. um, and so they uh, lived sort of that Western... Uh, lifestyle there, not a totally Western lifestyle, but, but it was a hodgepodge, but more so. right? Far more Western than right. China, and uh, so the Demo- Now that China uh, once again has Hong Kong in its possession, um, you know they're trying to crack down on those sort of democratic values that have uh, fermented there, and obviously there's a huge cultural clash going on, um, and China do- China is a, a very authoritarian country comparatively to. Uh, the United States, at least in terms of how it's, right. it deals with its own population. And so people that up until recent history have had been enjoying a much more liberal, westernized lifestyle are now being um, reintroduced to their mother country in the eyes of some and the kind of more authoritarian boot that comes along with that. And that's at the heart of these protests. Right. And uh, <clears throat> this has become kind of a bigger conversation about Chinese influence over... 
American companies and well, American media. Uh, South Park yeah, so recently yeah, South Park, did yeah. uh, a very popular episode that uh, people were, have been talking about and well, shit. Well, how Hollywood is so uh, crazy right. up to the Chinese especially censors. Especially pointing to uh, Disney, but pointing to all the major Hollywood <laughs> studios and just talking about how you know our art and entertainment is now you know filtered through the the grist of a chinese fucking censorship board and uh we're doing things to pander to that market um now it makes sense from a business standpoint but obviously it rubs a lot of americans the wrong way it rubs uh, well of course but that that just kind of underlines for me the real dividing line between these giant corporations and the customers that they serve i don't think that most of the people that play blizzard games would side either way in the Hong Kong protests. And the fact that one dude did probably wouldn't damage their bottom line anywhere. Right. Well, China has uh, proven itself to be very sensitive about these sorts of remarks. Um, and is kind of a fucking uh, example of that. Nearly all of the NBA's Chinese partners have cut ties with the league, and they did it over a tweet. What, what was the <laughs> of tweet? Course. Nearly all of the National Basketball Association's Chinese partners have publicly announced they are ending or suspending their relationship with the league. Out of the 25 official partners listed on the NBA China website, 13 are Chinese businesses. So far, 11 of those companies have distanced themselves from the league amid escalating tensions between China and the NBA. Uh, Ctrip.com, Antisports. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's all the names of the companies. The two remaining Chinese partners have our joint venture brands uh, that have not issued any statement yet. Earlier this week, Chinese tech giant Tencent, which is, we just heard about them a moment ago, uh, Luckin Coffee and Vivo announced the suspension of their relationship with the NBA. As the country with the largest population in the world and the second largest economy, China is one of the NBA's most important markets. That relationship began eroding over the weekend after Houston Rockets general manager Daryl Morey tweeted in the support of the anti-government protests in Hong Kong. The tweet was quickly deleted and Morey apologized, but his comments drew backlash in China. So because one manager of one team tweeted a tweet in support of Hong Kong and then immediately withdrew it and apologized for it. That was enough to sever these business oh, relationships. Oh, yeah, not have an opinion. So, obviously, China is ultra-sensitive about this shit. Well, they have every reason to be. The, the like, video and stuff that's coming out of these protests is increasingly damning. They have every reason to want to control PR around this. Oh, yeah. And I think that the scary thing about these stories is we're getting a peek at just how much influence Chinese corporations have over freedom of speech that <clears throat> right. is at least in the sphere of the United States. Right. I mean, well, you know, when when the Chinese market is this big and tantalizing, yet this volatile and authoritarian, you know, companies it kind of they kind of hold a lot of these american companies hostage you know it's well, like it shows they, you where these companies stand we want because that money every, we want that money so we're willing to do anything we can to keep that fucking money so exactly. what do you need us to say what do you need us to do what should we do how should we react you want him fired you want us you want us to take his money back done done anything you want and, and, china and anything course, you want the last paragraph is this the fucking double speak of everything the nba's commissioner adam silver apologized tuesday for the offending uh the league's chinese fans but he stood by Maury's right to express his opinion, saying the NBA would protect its employees' freedom of speech, except he deleted it immediately. Right. Of course. You know, you, you don't. No. Ch the Chinese side of this won. It won out. And it's just like with Blizzard, it won out because money talks and bullshit walks. I thought it was bullshit uh, talks and money walks. Well, that's only for Steve. <laughs> Sixers fans supporting Hong Kong ejected from preseason game amid NBA China controversy. We support freedom of speech yet again. Side on the, side of the, Chinese. the Sixers took on a team from China in an exhibition game. Fans in the stands took sides now that China and the NBA are in a standoff over a Houston Rockets executive's tweet that showed support for pro democracy protesters in Hong Kong. This is new video showing a Sixers fan saying he was being escorted out of the game. Sam Wax and his wife held signs supporting the Hong Kong protesters, which were then confiscated. Wax admitted he then stood up and started yelling, Free Hong Kong. I think it's kind of shameful. Like it's kind of lame how we now censor pro-democracy <laughs> sentiments. Yeah, these country, crazy pro-democracy yeah. people. Oh, get out of here. <clears throat> I mean, I don't know if the basketball game is necessarily the political forum to make that point. But 
Uh, I don't see how those signs were hurting anybody. They weren't. So they weren't. They, nor, nor were they disrupting the game in any way. What was disruptive was the forcible removal of them from the fucking arena for absolutely carrying for a, a sign for offending a bunch of Chinese whiners. More anti-China sentiments. Apple bows to China by censoring Taiwan flag emoji. <laughs> Great. Well, where do they build all the iPhones? Hmm. Mm-hmm. In a recent update to iOS 13.1, Apple's iPhone operating system, Apple reportedly removed the Taiwanese flag emoji from its keyboard for users in Hong Kong, Macau? Yeah, Macau. uh, China's two special administrative regions. Apple makes no mention of the change in its release notes for iOS 13.1.1. The company did not immediately reply to Quartz's inquiry about whether the Chinese government requested censorship of uh, the Taiwanese flag. The spoiler, they did. Taiwan is an independently run democracy, but China considers it part of its territory. However, again, against the backdrop of Hong Kong's pro-democracy protests, the move exemplifies continued corporate subservience to the Chinese government. Apple has blocked the Taiwanese flag emoji in mainland China since 2017. For a time, the code uh, the code for mainland censorship caused some iPhones to crash whenever the device tried to display the Taiwanese flag, a uh, bug which Apple fixed in 2018. So, yeah, um, yet another example of an American, an company, American company sucking the dick yep. of an authoritarian oh, please, dictatorship. China. Oh, what, what do you mean? What else you need to do, China? Or, 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 oh, we have to remember only all the airlines removed Ta- and that uh, was a Taiwan is there a location you could fly to because the Chinese said nope, Taiwan is not a country. It's just China. Sorry, just part of China. Sorry. Oh, and, and remember Google left China because like they, we don't want to build a censorship search engine. Guess they're already back. Well, of course they are. I mean, it, it's it's bullshit. <laughs> all these American companies are bowing to China as hard as possible. They're fucking going to do anything they can to supplicate. Because China's any kick- greater access to the market. But China's so kicking people. our ass in, in certain areas of the fucking tech sector. Inside China's re-education camps where women are raped and sterilized. Cool. Good old China. Doing, doing the Lord's work out there in them re-education camps. <laughs> Muslim women in Chinese... Pri- redneck voice, Paul. Muslim women in Chinese prison camps are being subjected to systematic rape, sterilization, and forced abortions. I mean, uh, normally that would be claimed. bad. Normally that would be bad, but they are Muslims. Muslims. So, I mean, how bad could it honestly be? Escapees who have taken refuge abroad are now sharing their stories of life inside the uh, Xinjiang... Zhang? I don't know. Detention centers in which the UN says more than one million ethnic uh, Uyghurs are being held. China describes them as training centers to help deter extremists. On the job training. But former prisoners say they are uh, being used to curb the country's Muslim population. Student Riku Perhat probably spent four years in prison after the 2009 uh Yurumqui riots triggered her arrest in Xinjiang. You know what it smells like in here, guys? What's it smell like? World War Three. Does it? Can you smell it? Can you smell the embers of the fire that will be World <coughs> War Three burning in all these stories yet? Chinese influence over American freedom of speech, ever escalating civil rights violations and human rights violations, ever more flagrantly being committed by an ever more powerful foe. Oh, starting to smell like World War Three in here, gentlemen. Hmm. Especially, maybe that's why Trump is pulling out of the Middle East. <clears throat> He's like, we need to say, we need to fucking. He's like, yeah, we got to get these soldiers back home so we can prepare to send them to China. <laughs> yeah, for the World War Three thing that we've got planned. Sweet. I mean, there's this seems like um, China World at War Call of Duty. I don't know, man. Who this... side's Russia going to be on? <laughs> Who do you think? They gonna be on China's side. Oh yeah, they're they're not still salty about the drubbing we gave them. They're gonna come over and suck our dick. Hell no, they're not gonna. Dude, let me tell you something about Russia. And maybe I'll maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'll be proved wrong. But the Russia in my mind, dude, never ever is gonna be subservient to the United States in any kind of way. They're never gonna join us as direct fucking allies ever again. Dude, Russia should, if, if if the U.S. and China went to war, Russia would just be better off going, like, we're a neutral, waiting for us to fucking beat the shit out of each other. <laughs> I gotta be honest with you. And conquering Russia, both of us, dude. Russia would probably be better off joining China and accepting the subservient status to that greater nation than aligning themselves with us at this point. I don't know if Russia would accept anyone besides, uh, I don't know, I mean, maybe, but it seems very unlikely. I mean, like, would they ally with China? Sure, but I don't know if they would They're say. They're neighbors, dude. 
Well, they are neighbors, but they, that, that, that's this even makes less. sense. Strategic alliance, man. No I mean, it, I mean, it would, but at the same time, like, I don't think that I think it'd be very difficult to occupy the U.S. I don't think that the, I don't think that would be the goal. I think the goal would be economic dominance. I think that's what China's already done. China would be very wary to go to war with any other nation unless they had no choice. They're not. They're, they're just not a very warlike country. They, they, they like to dominate in other ways. I mean, I guess it could happen. And I mean, I, I think if they thought they had the total upper hand, then they definitely would. <laughs> but I don't know. China's got a lot of problems too. Like I don't think you're being entirely accurate with China. I mean, China, yeah, their their, their tech industry and stuff has done well. But China has a, also a lot, has a lot of problems with. They just steal a lot of their shit. Now maybe they can develop that into something. They also have a demographic problem. They also have a lot of debt. A lot of their industries are just paper tigers. I mean, literally. So do, so, so do we, and so are ours. Yeah, but I I I, I, well, I would argue that I mean like what there's one thing the U.S. is good at like we've been on the scene longer with that that kind of shit. Of course. You know, so I'm not saying I think it would, I don't think it would just be, uh, but if China, uh, what uh, I would say honestly, this if Russia did side with China, then the U.S. pretty much would be. Fine. I mean, what happens if we start seeing a staunch military buildup in China? We're already seeing that now, right? We're, we're seeing it now. So, it, how long is it going to take this kind of a, a society that has proven to be so efficient at rebuilding itself to raise a fucking army that's going to give us hell? <coughs> I wouldn't think very long. I mean, but it it really depends. They I mean, certainly got the numbers. I mean, I mean, the numbers game is already won. What they need is the jets and the aircraft carriers and the nuclear weapons. What I would say that uh, the U.S. should honestly, w w what we should be doing more than anything, is looking at uh, sophisticated cyber attacks and to, just, and to create technologies that are so far ahead of theirs that even if they did do something like that, that we would have just a total huh. advantage. You want to know where they've got a head, uh, step ahead of us at? Well, you, AI. Well, what you just talked about too—the idea of you like cyber warfare. The Chinese have been openly and oh yeah, well, so have the Russians with so, impunity so prosecuting so the this cyber war shit. So I don't know, man. China, uh, I don't know. China is going to be a tough foe for any for anyone to deal with, just for the fact that I mean, because how do you secure the surrender of a country that large? Either way, <sighs> yeah, I mean, yeah, either way, our country you know what or I mean? theirs. So where where does do, where does a war between those two powers end, other than the utter destruction of one of them? You I, know what I mean, I mean e even if even if you're anything you're talking about, like for the U.S. and China, let's say it was World War Three, China's going to basically be destroyed too, unless they come up with some technology that's so far advanced that m no missiles or nothing can touch them. Which I don't think that's, that that even it would at this point exist. Well, you clearly haven't heard about the mind but, control but, rate. But Ru but Russia has these some crazy ass missiles that could hit the US now. Russia's got some crazy dude, there's some what about that fucking weird device they put in that building in Cuba that made everybody puke? You remember that story yeah, that Russia? just went away? They do, yeah, they, they do some crazy ass shit. What? I've They're never heard of that. Dude, oh, Russians are sloppy. Hold on, I want to know about this. So, yeah. so in the Cuban embassy, a bunch of people started getting really sick. Mm -hmm. Puking, dizzy, passing out. And no out. one knew what caused it. Nobody knew what caused it. And then when they fucking finally swept the place properly, they found some fucking sonic device that had been implanted by an opposing government in the embassy. Not surprising To disrupt all. the fucking, like operations operations of the human body but subtly so that nobody knew where it was coming from Whoa. that story was in the straight up news yeah like a year and a half or two years ago and just disappeared wow that's so crazy we're talking about like the next world war is not going to be like anything that we've seen no i agree with you there. we have the benefit of the last few wars that we've been to of utterly superior firepower against the foe so that we can do it conventionally, like people are used to seeing war being prosecuted. Dude, the next one of these giant conflicts is going to have some crazy shit involved in it. Crazy subversion of the uh, psychological well-being of uh, people through <laughs> chemical or sonic means. I think that, I think ultimately... These laser fucking weapons that heat people up, that raise your body temperature fucking 100%. I think ultimately 100%. a victory for either one of these societies would be just economic dominance. Like basically becoming like a, like a state that is like, yeah, you still exist, but it's basically to serve the, you know, the needs of this state. Like China needs a lot of uh, agricultural crops grown. You know what well, I mean? Then, well, it sounds like China's already <laughs> made huge inroads into that. It sounds like China's yeah. winning if that's the war. Because uh, that's the well, that's what makes the, Well, that makes the most sense because think right, about so that. Then you don't have to even fucking... You have so to, you, China you, you, just you, buys you, more and more of our country until eventually they own the business interests that control this country. Yeah, and then right. they just fucking. I mean, we pull already know. I mean, like we already know that our government is beholden to corporate America, and now we're seeing that corporate America is beholden to China. So, what does that mean? See, you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't even think they have to own like a lion's share. Like, look at no, just no, enough, just enough to get right. their way. Ten percent. Yeah, just enough that if they pull it, you're fucked. Right. Exactly. They don't need to own it all. 
So All they need to do is own enough to control yeah. you with. Just get a, get control of enough American companies at the 10 or 5% range, enough to where it would just be devastating to the books. Yeah. And then you got them by the fucking, and, uh, by the balls. And, look, and, the, and the rich people that run all these corporations, they don't give a shit. They just all want to be rich and live at fucking palatial mansions and live all these amazing lifestyles. As long as they get to keep doing that, they don't give a fuck if a million people are held in a concentration camp. <laughs> what, do they, what do they care? They're living on a fucking $100 million yacht. And as long as the rich fucks, the rich Chinese fucks, the rich American fucks, the rich European fucks of the world keep being rich fucks, See, they don't care what happens. This conflict that we're describing, whatever you know form it takes is kind of dependent on an anti-corporate <laughs> worldview because every corporate, like for corporations, this is not a conflict. They're more than happy to kowtow for the bottom line. They love it. And they, lo- and they love these uh, Chinese investors flush with money coming in and just scooping up, you know, chunks of their fucking, they love it. It's all, it all makes them more money. Look how much real estate Chinese people have bought. Look how much money U.S. corporations have invested in China. Like KFC is a huge company. Pizza is a huge company in China. They've so, we're sitting here describing this economic disaster that's looming where we're allowing a company to gain economic leverage over us that doesn't even begin to mimic our national values. But that's all a good thing to the corporate class, which is, in my opinion, the strongest political arm of America. Oh, yeah, easily. E- oh, yeah, 100%. No doubt. Of, so of the all world. of those motherfuckers are doing cartwheels for this shit. They're more than happy to do this shit. Dude, of the fucking world. Because in China, if you're a rich CEO of one of these companies, you basically have two sets of rules. You can go fucking run someone over and then send some other fucking little poor surf to go, well, Paul, yeah, he did run over that person in China. You, normally, you would have five years in prison, but you've hired your you know, proxy to go and be we in have prison the same thing you. here. I mean, yeah, these we do. Ri- these fucking little rich kids get to skate on shit that would land a normal person in yeah, fucking affluenza. jail forever. Yeah. Or these fucking white-collar criminals are able to... Uh, tie up in the legal process things to the point where they they're never prosecuted for things. I'm just saying, like, you want to look at the strongest class. It is the corporate ruling class, and it, and it's gone global. It's gone global. Like people argue about globalism so much with you, like, oh, globalism. Like, like, like they've already gone global. They already know the fucking future is selling it to every, as many people as possible. It's like, do they really want to be stuck in just one little fucking country? Fuck no. That's they want to I sell say, it to as many people as possible. That's why I say we lose. That's why I say in this fucking conflict, unless we fundamentally change the way we do things in this country and provide a strong counterexample, we just lose to basic attrition (laughs) the people that are in power take their fucking cues from corporate america who wants nothing more than to continue to allow china to further invade our economy and gain more and more control over our key industries how do you fight that chinese citizens will be required to scan their faces to use the internet wonderful i mean i've heard about other parts of this too like scanning your face to buy things right is, uh, yeah the, 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 it talks about here the chinese social credit system you can read the article deeper uh the chinese government continues its orwellian practices uh with the announcement that citizens will have to use facial recognition technology to access the internet which is already highly firewalled uh this is all part of a china's social credit system that will take effect on december 1st after the law is in effect chinese citizens who want to uh, have the internet installed at their house or on their smartphones will be required to undergo a facial recognition process by Chinese authority to pr- uh, prove their identities, according to the new regulation. Dude, the people in fucking run China really hate trolls, man. They like they want to know your fucking face. If you go fucking say some shit, <laughs> they, they, they want to know exactly who the fuck said it. Yeah. I keep seeing this uh, picture on Twitter. People keep reposting it or whatever the fuck. Uh, reblo- whatever oh, yeah, they call the, it. Dude, Retweeting the, it. This VIP thing? Oh, that'll totally happen. It'll be like... Pleb, 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 pleb. Rich person. Well, though, they, I've been seeing this picture of these uh, projectors that people are wearing. Uh, oh, yeah, you've seen that. I've seen right? that, too. I don't know if they're wearing them yet, but some companies develop these <coughs> facial scrambling projectors that uh, stymie facial recognition technology. Yeah. I'm not surprised at all. you seen it, Scotty? I haven't seen it's those, crazy. but like, there's different patterns. Here, I'll people, pull one up. There's yeah, different patterns people one. can use to put on their faces and stuff. But if you're walking through a lot of places now, like, yeah, they, there's more and more of the ability to identify who you are just based on this technology. Right. Like, oh, you're this person. And like you said, like, and, and this just makes sense. To a country, especially a country like China, like, if you can have a system and you already determine in that, with an algorithm what that person's value is to that society, it's like, oh, you want to enter this way? Well, because you're a VIP person, high social credit, you Check can go past. It, like, projects, like, other faces onto your face and shit to, like, hide your features and if you guys remember too they had a uh, black mirror episode about social uh, credit 
you know, were like, you had different things, and yeah, it was based on your rating on society. It's like, <clears throat> yeah, and people voted on you and shit. And it was weighted, to, you know, if like it was like a person that had to be nice to you almost, like their vote didn't count as, as much, and if a person was a higher status member of society, they, obviously their vote cast, cast for, you know, for you was more favorable. Yeah. I mean, this is not surprising that this would, you know, uh, have come out. You gonna you gonna get one? I want one. I want a face scrambler. Paul's man. getting one. I'm getting one of those. Oh yeah. You guys will never see my real face again. So I've noticed that we've been leaving some people behind in our outreach efforts. Yeah. Um. So TJ, will you uh, do sign language for the message tonight, and I will be doing the message in Espanol. Okay. Okay. Por favor, señores y señoras. Necesito dinero. Ayúdame. Ayúdame, por favor. Uh, eat the... Eat the uh, how do you say eat? Comida. Comida. Por sale. At the Pessimist Productions. Patreon. Go. Now. Become one. Or don't. And be a loser. Oh, I'm so hungry. Be oh, a I'm loser. Hungry. Be a loser for the rest of your life. Don't be like us. Be a winner. Join now. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>